Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we are doing the 2023 Top 10s as we are going to look at the fighter, uh, the 200 pound cruiserweight division and we're going to look at the fighters that are on the bubble of popping into the Top 10 in 2024. Now, before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment or subscribe to the channel, I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So on the bubble what does it mean it, it basically means the fighters that i i believe are close to cracking into the top 10 in 2024 now there's uh there's three specific reasons why either they're getting an opportunity that we know about for sure already or they have a big name and and you know and all that or they're highly ranked in in the gov in the governing bodies you know and they're close to a title shot that way now, um, it could be one of those, it could be two of those, they could be all three. So it just depends. So in no particular order, let's run through the fighters that I think are on the bubble in the 200 pound cruiserweight division. We start with Ryan Rosicki, power punching uh, fighter um, that is the WBC's number one ranked contender right now. I think Rosicki fought um, for the first cruiserweight title, or bridgerweight title, um, and that's the only loss of his career. Um, he destroyed some um, some stepping stone type guy uh, in his last fight to become the number one ranked contender. So um, I, I think there's a solid chance that Ryan Rosicki gets a crack at new champion Noel Gavor um, sometime this year. Um, I really think uh, the WBC will probably try to set that up. And he's a power punching guy. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he pulled off the win. If I had to pick right now, I'd probably pick Gavor to beat him. But... I also wouldn't be surprised if Riziki pulled off the upset in that one. Um, you know, pulled it off with his punching power because he's he's a big dude. Like I said, he fought at the the newly formed uh, Bridgerweight division um, that was formed by the WBC, which is like uh, it's anywhere between 201 and 220, I believe. So it's kind of like a small heavyweight uh, division is what they're going for. So um, so we'll see. Next is uh, former two-time world title challenger Mikhail Ciaslock. C.S. Locke is a WBC and the WBO's number two contender. He dropped out of the top 10, but he had a good year. He went 2-0, um, but didn't fight anybody significant, um, which is why he's still not in the top 10. But he's still right there. And C.S. Locke is one of those guys that um, he's fought for titles twice. He lost a very close decision to Alunka Makabu a few years back and then lost a convincing decision to Lawrence O'Coley. But... Um, you know, Lawrence Acoli was highly regarded at the time, so that wasn't considered to be like uh, a big time thing. A lot of people were, were expecting a better fight out of both guys, but C.S. Locke is still one of those guys that a lot of fighters that are on the rise are going to look at and be like, hey, I'll fight that guy because he's more of a gatekeeper. Uh, C.S. Locke will love that because that's what he wants is opportunities. Now, him being ranked number two in the WBC sends a message to me that, hey, maybe maybe the, the WBC uh, puts together a true final eliminator against somebody legitimate for Ryan Rosicki, and, and him and Ryan Rosicki can can collide to, to see who the the number one, the true number one ranked contender should be. So we'll see what happens. I'm hoping uh, C.S. Locke gets some kind of opportunity. I think he will, and we'll see if he can bust back into the top 10. Uh, then there's Tabiso Mashunu, the former world title challenger. Mashunu is number three in the WBC. He actually dropped out of the top 10 from last year uh, due to inactivity. He actually hasn't fought since his January uh, 2022 uh, very close controversial decision loss to um, to uh, Alunga Makabu. He's dropped out due to uh, inactivity, but uh, I think he's, he's still on the bubble because he's number three in the WBC. So I really do think that uh, Mushunu is going to get some kind of an opportunity this year as long as he's able to come back and fight, um, you know, to to do something. So we'll see what, what he does. Um, next... Uh, on the bubble is Mike Perez, the former heavyweight contender. Mike Perez is a WBA's number three ranked contender. So, um, you know, Mike Perez hasn't really done much over the last uh, few years, but um, his talent level, he is a pure boxer and a southpaw. His talent level could take him potentially to an eliminator this year, I think, um, and, and try to earn a title shot. So I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Perez gets back into it um, you know, I, I can't, can at least, like I said, set up a, a title eliminator 
to put himself into a title fight. So we'll see. Then it's uh, uh, some guy named Yamil Peralta, who's the WBC's number four contender. Um, he's up there. Like I said, he's highly ranked by the WBC. Who knows how the WBC is going to set up their, um, you know, their their run for the, the next number one contender. So Peralta might be able to set himself up into some kind of an eliminator by the end of the year in the WBC. Then there's Fyra Arslan, the, the very old former world champion. Arslan is the WBA's number four contender right now. So, you know, Arslan, he's, he's fought for a while. Guys will be willing to fight him. If the WBA sets up an eliminator uh, between him and somebody else, I wouldn't be surprised if Arslan uh, gets a crack at somebody by the end of the year to move himself back into title contention. So um, I don't think he'll bust into the, the, the top 10, but you never know. He's still banging around. You never know what some of these older veterans, especially at the heavier weights, can pull off because because the power, the one thing that never goes is the power, and that and that is more significant at the higher weights. Then there's former world title challenger Alexei Igorgov. Igorgov's the WBA's number five contender. He lost to Arsen Gulamirian back in 2022, but he's still banging around. He's still ranked um, in the top five in one of the governing bodies, and that's significant. That means he he could get into title contention or, or again, get an eliminator of some sorts uh, before the end of the year. So we'll see what he pulls off. Then there's um, former light heavyweight world title challenger Marcus Brown, who's now a cruiserweight. He's the WBO's number four contender. Marcus Brown is an entertaining and a good fighter, and I really would not be surprised if Marcus Brown got a crack at, at, um, at an eliminator of some sorts before the end of the year. I could very easily see Marcus Brown and Mikel Sia Slock fighting in a WBO eliminator to see who, who uh, gets to fight you know for the world title um either at the end of the year or next year uh then there's former world uh, light heavyweight champion joe smith jr joe smith is a cruiserweight now he debuted against um gilberto ramirez uh last year and came up short uh losing a decision but joe smith was always a big light heavyweight and him banging around at an older age with the power that he possesses i still think he's a threat his highest ranking is number seven in the WBA, but with his name, I think Joe Smith's the kind of guy that you take an optional defense against uh, once you're world champion. And I could see him going for a big money fight. Like, for example, if um, Jayo Pataya were to beat um, Maris Bradis in their rematch and become IBF champion again, I could see Opataya going after um uh going after joe smith uh you know in saudi arabia so i think joe smith is about making that big time money and taking uh some of these opportunities and i think joe smith will get an opportunity as long as he wants to fight and as long as he's hungry in 2024 and then finally uh the last guy on the bubble is former champion undefeated arson gulamarian gulamarian uh again is the wba champion um he dropped out due to inactivity but he has uh it looks like He's got his next fight lined up, and it looks like mid-March, Gulamarian is going to defend his title against Gilberto Ramirez in a, a big-time mandatory showdown right here. Ramirez is a former super middleweight champ, so if Gulamarian can beat Ramirez, he's going to shoot straight back into the top 10 and really have some uh, pull now and, and can fight you know, uh, legitimate fighters in his next defense, you know, and, and guys that will, will be willing to fight him more. So we'll see. Um, I personally think he's going to lose that fight, but with Ramirez not being an experienced cruiserweight and also with Ramirez, his only win at cruiserweight being against a, a guy in Joe Smith Jr. who was moving up to uh, cruiserweight as well. I think Gulamarian has a serious chance in this fight and I think it should be good. So uh, that's it. That's my 2023 uh, top 10s on the 200-pound cruiserweight division, and this is the fighters that are on the bubble of busting into the top 10 in 2024. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.